evening, Captain. Good evening. Good evening, Mr. Gilman. We missed you at dinner, sir. I told the steward to throw it over the rail. Save me the trouble. But we're in port now, sir. Why don't you go ashore and get your sea legs back? What? And leave Newlander here alone with that fraud Corcoran? Mr. Newlander's a pretty shrewd businessman, sir. Well, he certainly is. But that doesn't prevent those vultures from trying. I wouldn't care if it was a legitimate proposition, like mine. No, of course not, sir. Evening, Mr. Corcoran. Have you seen Mr. Newlander? Yes, right in there. Been playing chess for hours. Why didn't I learn how to play that game? I've got important business with him, and he spends all of his time playing chess with that title chiseler. My dear Newlander, you will be simply insane about the place. It's one of the finest castles in all Europe. Been in my family since the 11th century. Well, if the castle's been in the family as long as that, wouldn't it uh, be cruel to deprive them of it? Check. Ah, but for a special friend like yourself. Checkmate. Remarkable. You have beaten me again. Yes, again. <laughs> Extraordinary, isn't it? Tony! Oh, Cecilia. How are you, Tony, darling? Oh, nice, nice to see you. You know the Marchese? Oh, yes. Hello, Pietro. Sorry, but I've got to steal him for a moment. Do you mind? My only regret is that you are not stealing me. <laughs> Excuse us. We only found out you were in port about an hour ago. Oh, really? The new lander. Yes. I've finished refueling, sir. Shall we push off for Venice in the morning? Uh, whenever you like. Yes. You don't mind my coming aboard like this, do you? Why, no, of course not. There's no reason why a man and his ex-wife shouldn't be good friends. <laughs> I, uh, I see you haven't changed the name. No, I, I cling to all things, rather. And I couldn't forget the day we christened her. We did have fun, didn't we? Yes. I miss you so much, Tony. What? After five years, I must have made quite an impression. Tony, I was such a fool to leave you. Oh, you mustn't talk like that, Cecilia. Well, why not? Well, you're married again now. Oh, darling. Kiss me. Oh, there's so many things I want to talk to you about. There's something I've got to ask you now, Tony, and you must tell me the truth. You mean, do I still love you? Oh, no. Could you give Pierre a job in one of your corporations? Job. Yes, I brought him with me to talk to you about it. You could make him president or, or vice president or something. We're so terribly hard up. Well, I'm afraid not president, but I'll see what I can do. Oh, you are a darling. I knew I could depend on you. Pierre will accept, I'm sure. Well, that's uh, very kind of Pierre. It's a little chilly out here, isn't it? Uh, shall we go in? You don't look quite yourself, sir. Aren't you feeling well? I've got a bad taste in my mouth, Albert. Oh, that's too bad, sir. Let me see your tongue. <laughs> Good old faithful. Perhaps a little mouthwash, sir, huh? No, I doubt whether that'd cure it. But I think I know something that will. Hello, hello, Captain. Get all the shore guests off the ship at once, will you, please? Uh, say I'm not feeling well and can't say goodbye, and then, uh, then shove off. No, 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 not for Venice. We're sailing for home. Yeah, full steam ahead. Thank you. You're ending the cruise, sir? Why? Because I want to dump this gang of stooges. Then we'll fumigate the ship from stem to stern, and we'll go fishing. Off the Florida Keys, just you and I. Splendid, sir. It would be nice to be alone with you again, sir. Albert, my boy, I'm through with leeches for the rest of my life. And we'll celebrate that decision with a bottle of good old wine. Now, go and get it. Bring a glass for yourself. Me, sir? Yes, we'll drink to it. Oh, yes, sir. Thank you. Oh, Albert, how, uh, how long have you been with me? Uh, Eleven years and three months, sir. Oh, that's a long time. Well, perhaps it takes that long to make a real friend. Oh, thank you, Mr. Newlander. Thank you, sir. Oh, Albert! I tell you, I've got him right in the palm of my hand. But well, how do you know you're in the will? Have you seen him? I don't have to see it. I know I'm in it. 
Why, he just this minute told me I'm the only friend he's got in the world. Well, lucky you. <laughs> Better take these, too. Okay. Here we are, sir. Shall I open it, sir? Yes, yes, of course, open it. Nice. Albert, you'd do anything for me, wouldn't you? <laughs> I'd cut off my right arm for you, sir. Well, don't be surprised if I ask you to one day. Oh, you'll find me ready, sir, when that day comes. Hmm. To old and faithful friends. Thank you, sir. To a most generous and understanding master, sir. Yes, I think I'm just beginning to understand. Now, Albert, I've got some work to do. A little addition to my will. Oh, yes, sir. And I don't want to be disturbed. No, sir. That's all, yes. Oh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Then, oh, Albert. Yes, sir? I might sleep late tomorrow, so don't call me until I ring. Yes, sir. Very good, sir. Good night, sir. What you wanted? No, I was committing suicide. Oh, really? Well, it didn't sound like it, the way you kept yelling for help. Monsieur, I was drunk. Oh, you were? <laughs> you should have let me drown. What? And miss a chance to get off that boat? Why, does it leak? Uh, I wish it did. <laughs> Monsieur, you are catching cold. We'd better go somewhere and dry off. Come on. Yes. I don't think I could commit suicide again tonight. <laughs> no, I wouldn't. Monsieur, I better take you to a hotel. Of course, you like the best, the most expensive. Now, couldn't we go someplace that doesn't smell of money? Money? That's the only smell I haven't got at my little rendezvous. <laughs> That's fine. Monsieur, this way. Thank you. What made you do it, Louis? I don't suppose it was love. Love. It was real trouble, monsieur. Financial. Oh. Well, in that case, I can't blame you. I've been tempted to do the same thing myself. Oh, but, monsieur, with these beautiful evening clothes, you cannot be very poor. No. I'm on the other end, Louis. Trouble is, I've got too much. Too much? How much is too much? Well, it... You know, I like it here. Much better than on my yacht. Yacht? Was that your yacht? Yes, and a rotten time I was having on her, too. Monsieur, you are a strange gentleman. You see, you like this while you could be surrounded by elegant ladies and caviar and silk pajamas, champagne, everything that money can buy. <laughs> well, believe it or not, Louis, one can get very tired just uh, buying things. 
I'd like to be tired that way just once. Yes, I assure you, you would too after a while. Well, with all my money, what, what thrill do I get out of it? Lobster Thermidor for lunch. Lobster who? Thermidor. Uh, you... Oh, it sounds wonderful. You know, I'm very fond of lobster too. Sometimes I catch one and then I boil him. But I never had... What did you call him? Thermidor. Uh, monsieur. Uh, Thermidor? That's right, Louis. I think I'll turn in now. Are you comfortable? Oh, yeah. It's fine. Thank you, Lloyd. Good night. Good night. Excuse me, please. Your yacht. Yeah? What about it? They'll find you gone. Don't you want to send word to your friends? About what? Well, your friends, they'll be worried. <laughs> no, I'm afraid not. See, when a man's as rich as I am, he doesn't have friends. What, uh, no friends? You know, Louis, if I could find one person, just one, who would lift a finger for me without hoping to get paid for it, I'd give a million francs. A million? Yeah, at least a million. A million francs. Monsieur? Monsieur? Did you took my... Isn't that Louis de Dope? Sure it is. Service, Casson, Casson, service, please. I thought I told you to stay out of here. Oh, yes, monsieur, but I wish to order a very expensive breakfast. You do, huh? And what would you like? Oh, some wine or dinner, and for 1,000 francs, lobsters with thermidor. Lobsters? Why don't you try the Ritz? They are used to gentlemen in dress suits who don't pay their bills. Oh, oh, I remember. I owe you two francs fifty. Take it out of this. A thousand francs? It's counterfeit. Oh, no, monsieur. It's real money. So is this. Where did you get this money? A man gave it to me. A millionaire. <laughs> Did you hear that? A millionaire. 
millionaire gave it to him. Oh, but he did, monsieur, and he'll give away a million more to anyone who is just kind to him. Oh, <laughs> he'll give away a million more, eh? Yes, monsieur. Sure, sure. Get the police. Come back here. Get the money. Give me the police. Just a minute, just a minute. What's that story about a millionaire? Don't mind it. Please, monsieur, last night a gentleman saved my life. And this morning, when I woke up, I had the other clue. A little more smile, monsieur. A little to the left, please. No, no. I mean to the left, monsieur. That way. That's it. Perfect. Monsieur, raise your hand a little bit. Look straight at me. Splendid. Now, one more, monsieur. Not this way. Don't cover your face, please. Thank you. Thank you. That's it. Stay away, monsieur. That's it. Perfect. Why, it is destiny. If I am going to that place to get a glass of beer, we would have missed the biggest story of the century. Yes, yes, but hurry and get those booze up here. Think of it. Think of it. A millionaire dressed up as a tram, walking around the streets, willing to give a million francs to anyone who's nice to him. All right, but you are sure we have got it exclusive? Positive. I held my hand over his mouth until I got him here. Very good. And keep him right here in the office. Don't let him out of your sight for a minute. We will need him to identify the millionaire. Uh, for an alibi, if the whole thing is a fake. Yes, yes, yes. Haven't they finished with those pictures yet? Thank you. Just one more, please. All right, boys, all right. That's enough for the moment. Sure. Back to work, please. Thank Back you. Work. Thank you. Goodbye, everybody. Uh, just a minute, just a minute, my friend. We would like to talk to you. Yes, yes. Oh, oh, yes, please, but I am starving. Could I go first and eat? Later, later. We must have a description of that millionaire. Yes, what did he look like? Yes. It was so dark. Oh, but you must have noticed something. Come on, my friends, speak up. I remember nothing except that I'm hungry. Can you forget your stomach for a minute, please? No, not an empty stomach. Think, my friend, think. Did he look like me? Oh, no. He was a gentleman. Ah, huh? What was he handsome, ugly, fat thing? Come on, concentrate. Uh, maybe if I get something to eat, I can remember. Oh, very well, let him eat. We will save the description for the next edition. Now, uh, let me see this. Millionaire disguised as Trump would give million for kind deed. Oh, uh, let's punch this up a bit. Make it, we'll give. Here, run this man's picture and print an extra 20,000. Feed him. Now, what do you want to eat, huh? Uh, what can I have? Anything, anything you want. I'll give you the best lunch you ever had. Then, lobster, please, and thermidor. Where'd you come from? Nice manners. I suppose you know that was my last cigarette. My name's uh, Tony, what's yours? Oh, you won't talk, huh? to him. Well, I'm afraid he was already a little bored with my conversation. Well, don't just stand there. After letting him get away, the least you can do is to help me catch him. Yes. Well, yes, come on. Yes, yes, for the greatest of pleasure. Here, come here. Darn him. A smart fellow. Now, where'd he go? I'm going to wipe the pants off of him if I ever catch him. Yes, I think we'd better change tactics. I'll hide and you go after him. Now, I don't want to get personal or anything, but is this monkey your pet? Pet my eye? He's my bread and butter. Part of our act in the circus. Now hurry before he gets away. Go on. All right, mademoiselle. Here, Jocko. No, 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 no. The name is Darwin. And you don't have to mademoiselle me. I'm an American. That's fine. So am I. Well, we'll go into that later. Now, go on. Here, Darwin. Here, Darwin. Here, Darwin. I think I see him. You do? Duck, duck. Hello, hello, Darwin, old boy. <laughs> ah, 
I'm not going to hurt you. Oh, yeah, shake hands. That's fine. Come on. Hey, I got him. I got him. No, no, grab both hands. <laughs> oh. I told you to grab both hands. What happened? Oh, I forgot to tell you. He's an expert at jujitsu. Jujitsu? Uh huh. Expert is a word. Yeah, well, come on, I'll help you get up. Which way to go? I wouldn't know. Oh, uh, mister, your slip's showing. Uh, oh, so it is. Did Darwin do that? Well, it, it didn't come with a suit. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> That's all right. One little hole doesn't make much difference. Well, I'll sort up for you just as soon as I can. All right, thank you. Oh, he's done it again. He's turned in another fire alarm. Oh. Darwin. <laughs> there he is. Oh, get him over there quick before the police see him. Hurry. Oh. Come on, Darwin. Come on, get out over there. Come on, boy, you get this one. Come on. How do you shut this thing off? I don't know, but we better get out of here. Come on, get out of there, Darwin. Get out of there. Come on. Come on. Where's the fire? So you're the one who's been turning in this fire alarm. What? No, officer, no, he didn't. We've been looking for you for a long time. Come no, on. No, officer, he didn't turn in the alarm. The monkey did it. Oh, you expect me to believe that? Oh, yes, Come hey, on. Now, wait a minute here. No, oh, no, no. Look here. Please, officer. Look, you I didn't do it. Give me the Come on, give me the Millionaire disguised as tramp will give a million for kind deed. Roaming cow streets today is a millionaire in the tattered clothes of a tramp, anxious to give a million francs to any person who shows him the smallest kindness. No description yet available. He may be at your very elbow as you read these words. You suppose it's true? Well, it says so, doesn't it? Come, let's walk down to the park. Yes, uh, let's do it. <laughs> You wait here. Oh, no, you don't. I saw him first. Wait. Monsieur, uh, permit me. May I light your cigarette? Don't smoke that, monsieur. Here, uh, have a cigar. You're very kind. Oh, not at all. Will you have a drink with us, please? Yes, yes John. Please. You're not going to get away with this. Oh, please, mademoiselle. This is absolutely out of my hands. I demand justice. Uh, what is going on here? Well, this officer's trying to incriminate my friend. He did nothing. I was there as a witness. Where, mademoiselle, where? Let us begin at the beginning. Monsieur, this man is a tramp. Oh, a vagrant, no, huh? No, monsieur. Who let him in? Oh, take him away. Take him away. Not me. Sit down, darling. Come here. Give me this. It's, um, is this, uh, is this thing yours? Yes. Uh, uh, look at the poor fellow. I'm sure he's sorry, monsieur. Wouldn't you like to shake hands with him, monsieur, just to show that everything is forgiven? Certainly not. Perhaps it's just as well. Uh, have you finished, monsieur? Finished? I should think I have. Here, uh, take it away. Uh, uh, so you are a vagrant, huh? Well, he is not. He's an honest, law-abiding citizen. Oh, thank you. Well, I wasn't going to let him... Silence! Have... What have you to say for yourself? Oh, not guilty. Are you contributing in any way to the support of this community? Not at the moment, no, but... Where did you sleep last night? On a bench in the park? Oh, oh, no. No, at a very nice little place down at the beach. I thought so. 200 francs or 10 days. 200 francs? Well, I'll never be able to raise that much. Oh, that's all right. That's just the same, but I'm afraid it'll have to be the 10 days. Lock him up. Come along. This is an outrage, a miscarriage of justice. Come, mademoiselle. Let go! Let go! Now, now you heard what Monsieur say. You are getting out of I here. I am not getting out. You can't put him in jail. Let me go. Look here. You heard what the young lady said. Let go of her. You big ape. Oh. oh, I forgot to tell you. My name is Jean. You can always find me at the Circus Primrose. I'll remember. Get out of here. Oh. Uh, Monsieur, where are you going? What? Well, you just gave me ten days, remember? Oh, did I really? Uh, come over here, I, uh, I want to talk to you. <laughs> what are you standing around here for? Go on, go back to your post. Uh, yes, monsieur. You know, monsieur, I've taken quite an interest in you. There is something about you... Uh... Well, you're very kind. Exactly, I am kind. Very kind. I'm a man of uh, sentiment. I, uh, won't you sit down here, please? Right here, if you please, uh, sit down. Do uh, you say you are penniless? Huh? Yes, for the moment. Oh, that's very sad. I'm touched. My dear friend, in spite of the gravity of your offense, 
in spite of my oath to uphold the laws of this municipality, I'm going to follow the dictates of my heart. Really? I'm going to bestow upon you man's most precious blessing. I give you your liberty. You mean I'm free? Free as the birds. Yeah, well... <laughs> well I, I'm overwhelmed. Good, goodbye, monsieur. Good, and a million thanks. Oh, monsieur! You better take um, this, uh, my telephone number is on it. Oh, your card, huh? Well, thank you. Not at all, not at all. I hope to see you again, huh? Under more pleasant circumstances? Yeah, perhaps, yes. Thank you. Uh, careful! This step. Thank you. Oh! My friend, what will you ask? A necklace? A cream puff with whipped cream? Macaroons? No, no, I wasn't thinking of any food. Oh, but anything, monsieur, anything in my shop. And not charge whatever. Oh, well, thank you, thank you very much. Oh, uh, uh, could you lend me a coin for just a moment? But of course, of course, of course, of course. My lucky five franc piece. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, that settles it. Did you tell me how I got to the circus primrose? <laughs> Still the unspoiled youth. How charming. You see, look, you cross the street here, then turn left, past the church, to the end of the street. Oh, thank you very much. Oh, no, no, keep it, I beg of you. Oh, look here. Oh, no, I no, I could not. <laughs> Buy yourself a seat at the circus, monsieur, and when you are enjoying yourself, think of me, Victor Chamieux, who made it possible. My card, my telephone number is here at the bottom. Uh, forgive me, but is there some sort of an epidemic in this town? Oh, monsieur will have his little joke. <laughs> joke? What joke? Ah, uh, monsieur, you know. <laughs> you know. You are Monsieur Safe and Sound. Thank you. Not at all, not at all. This is my station. I am here every afternoon until six. And Monsieur, uh, may I assist you? No, I, I think I can make it alone. Monsieur? She will be an artist. Then comes Marie, the prettiest one. You will see her play the piano later. Will I? Certainly, my dear fellow. You will dine with us. My cook will make a splendid escalopino veal with sauce marsala. You have never tasted anything like it. But I don't like veal. He doesn't like veal. Oh, perhaps a fillet. That's it, a nice fillet. Read all about it. Man giving away a million francs. Read all about it. Man giving away a million francs. Here, sir, from me to you. Millionaire disguised as tramp to give fortune for kind deed. Millionaire disguised as tramp to give fortune for kind deed. Read all about it. Read all about it. Millionaire giving a million francs. Read all about it. Oh. What is so funny? This. Oh, you do not believe it, huh? Do you? Give me back my paper. Millionaire disguised as oh. Could he have fallen overboard? What is it, Captain? It's his pipe. Oh, do you suppose? I'm afraid something terrible has happened. Oh, oh what an awful tragedy. Oh, dear. Well, Captain, what's our next move? I'll radio the news at once. Radio? Wait a minute, you can't do that. I beg your pardon. Can't you understand that this news will make Newlander's securities drop with a thud that'll be heard from here to Wall Street? He's right. Of course I'm right. It'll ruin all. We'll be wiped out. I can't help that. Everything we have is tied up in his company. I'm sorry, gentlemen. But you can't radio that message until we've had a chance to sell our securities. Captain, you can't do that to us. Uh, just a moment. Oh, hello, Eddie. Hello, Mr. Corcoran. Then how's everything? Oh, fine, sir. Thank you. Interesting thing, radio. Don't know much about it myself. Oh, is that so? Is that the sending apparatus? That's right, sir. Mm hmm Well, the whole thing wouldn't be much good without that, would it? Well, hardly. <laughs> what ship is that we're passing? Ship? Why, I, I don't see any ship. 
Say, what are you doing with that? Just saving my hide, laddie. My friends, there is too little kindness in the world. So today I, Anatole Primrose, sole owner of this magnificent extravaganza, invite all of those temporarily distressed to see this tremendous performance as my guests. You will see ah, go right in, mes amis. You're very welcome. Monsieur, monsieur. And here, mesdames and messieurs, is Darwin. Darwin the Great. The only boxing chimpanzee in captivity. Watch him, mesdames and messieurs, watch him. His feet of strength will amaze you. Will amaze you. You. How did you get out? Well, while we were saying goodbye, his honor read the paper about that, about the millionaire, you know? Oh, and he thought you were the millionaire? It's a good one, isn't it? Just a minute. Your attention, please. Is there a boxer in the crowd today? We offer 10 francs to any man who can stay on his feet for one minute in a boxing match with Darwin. Think of it, monsieur. 10 francs for only one minute. Who will offer? You, monsieur. Well, step right up here. Come right up here on the platform. Come right up. Good luck. Good luck, old boy. This way, please. Ah, you are magnificent, monsieur. Oh, you're not afraid, Darwin, of this young giant? No. What courage. Monsieur, no hitting below the belt. The first to hit the floor is defeated. And now I believe it's customary before the match for the opponents to shake hands. Shake hands. <laughs> <laughs> Darwin. He feels especially good today. Hey, he certainly gave that fellow a good working over. <laughs> uh, these are for you. Oh, thank you. They're lovely. Where did you swipe these? Swipe them? After having the florist grow them especially for you? Don't tell me you bought them. <laughs> well, certainly. Where else? In the... You would. Have you eaten today? Well, you must admit I haven't had much time. My, but you're stupid. But I'm glad you did it. Oh, look out, he's coming. Not your husband. Worse, the proprietor's son. Hello, Maxie. What's going on here? Well, oh, this is an old friend of mine from America. Oh, this is young Monsieur Primrose, who will someday inherit the circus. Oh, really? Oh, how do you do? Old friend. Huh? Well, hardly old, considering Mademoiselle's age. But we were children together. Oh, he just brought me these flowers for old time's sake. Wasn't that nice of him, Maxie? Uh-huh. Jean. Oh, Uncle Victor, <laughs> I have the nicest surprise for you. Guess who's here? Who? Oh, I knew you wouldn't recognize him after all these years. <laughs> Bobo. Bobo? Well, of course, I have grown a little. Yes, isn't it wonderful? My childhood playmate, you know. Your yeah. Oh, certainly. He has grown, hasn't he? <laughs> well, well, this is Jojo. Bobo, Bobo. Bobo. Yeah, Bobo. Bobo. Yeah, you remember Bobo. Uncle Victor when he used to bounce me on your knees? And the huh? piggy bags, remember? <laughs> yes, yes, we used to have such wonderful times. <laughs> 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 yes, <yeah. laughs> oh, Maxie, there's the Grand March. You'll never make it if you don't hurry. I'll talk to you later. <laughs> This is Jean's father and mother, and <laughs> this is me. If you can recognize me, it's almost 20 years ago. Is that so? <laughs> we had a fall right after that picture was taken. Jean and I were left alone. But we've had fun, haven't we? We certainly have. <laughs> well, I'd better see about Darwin's dinner. Oh, that's the best dish of ham and eggs I've ever eaten. More? Mm, no, thank you. Oh, uh, I'm afraid the trousers wouldn't stand it. You know, Tony, I can't quite make you out. How'd you happen to get on your uppers like this? Or aren't you telling? <laughs> well, I'm a restless sort of a bird. I guess I should have joined the Marines. Well, I see. You aren't telling. <laughs> well, you aren't any too happy the way things are, are you? No, no, far from it. 
Then why don't you do something about it? Well, I'd like to, but you see, Look I... at those lily-white hands. Aren't you ashamed of yourself? How long has it been since you worked up an appetite? Well, I'll let this every see. Mm -hmm. I thought so. Huh? Go back into my bedroom and put these on. All finished? I'm right back here. You know something? What? Your loafing days are over. <laughs> this sounds serious. What's up? You're going to work. Well, that's nice of you to make up my mind for me. Well, it's about time somebody did. What can you do, if anything? Oh, I can... Uh... Mm-hmm, just as I thought. Then I'll have to invent something. Let me see. Sadies look all right. I've got it. Come on. Huh? Uh, come on with me. Oh, off to the mines, eh? I'm going to make a man out of you or know the reason why. <laughs> Now, you keep your mouth shut and leave everything to me. Aye, aye, Sergeant. Come on. They're primrose. Yes? I I'd like you to meet Monsieur uh, Dubois. How do you do, sir? How do you do, Monsieur? It is indeed a pleasure. Thank you. Be sure to let Monsieur in free for our next performance. Yes. Oh, no, no. He doesn't want to get in the show. He wants a job. A job? Uh -huh. Don't bother me. I thought he was a tramp. Well, he was, but he's reformed. He's willing to work for practically anything. Go away. I'm busy. Well, you try. Uh, Monsieur. Monsieur. Huh? Uh, you'll find I'm pretty handy if you'll just give me a chance. You look it. But he's very strong and willing. And... I have all the men I need. Well, that's that. It is not. You leave this to me. Wait out here. Well, you're hired. Really? Uh-huh. You're to be relief night watchman in the menagerie tent. Well, say, now, that's an important job. Uh-huh. Well, what did you tell him to make him change his mind? Well, in order to put you over, I had to tell him something good. <laughs> I bet you did. I told him that if Adolf got hurt, you'd be willing to take his place and be shot out of the cannon. <laughs> with you entirely. It is an outrage, and I will do something about it at once. Have another piece, my friend, <laughs> and try some of this wine, my own private stock. Good, eh? <laughs> Jean's broken the world record. Does he remember what the millionaire looks like? No, he can only remember lobster thermidor. Now listen carefully, you. I have got to produce that millionaire at once. Do you understand? At once. Yes, Monsieur Courier. What's up? Keep quiet. You are just as responsible for this mess as he is. I? Silence. Now clear the lobster from your brain and think. Think? Can't you remember anything? About what? About what? Uh, well, would you recognize him on the street? Oh, yes, anywhere. He was a very nice man. See? Why don't you send him out to look for the fellow? That's it. Take him out and comb the city. Search everywhere. Break down doors if you have to. But don't come back here without that millionaire. Go! Excuse what me. What now, huh? Let's... He's not here. Let's go. Wait, please. 
Couldn't we play a quick little game? Oh, no, you don't. Come on. be a little cold. Well, that's very kind. Matter of fact, I was a little. Now, don't get too wide awake. Better go back to sleep. Sleep? <laughs> With these animals starting up again? Hey, couldn't we give them a bromide or something? Well, the regular man uh, sings them to sleep. No. Yes. Can you sing? <laughs> Only barbershop. Say, I'd sing grand opera if it'll do any good. Have you got a comb to accompany me on? Well, uh, Gaston uses a guitar. Uh, you suppose I could borrow it? Maybe it's over here with this coat. Oh, that's fine. What do you think they'd like? I don't know. Well, let's try a little opera. Maybe they're mountain lions. She'll be a coming around the mountain when she comes. She's come. She'll be coming around the mountain. <laughs> This one should work. I've got them in the mood. Rock-a-bye, baby, on the treetop. When the wind blows, the cradle will rock. When the bow breaks, the cradle will fall, and down will come a baby, cradle and all. Rock a baby on the treetop, when the wind blows, the cradle What do you want? It's the mayor again, monsieur. He wants to know when you will publish the retraction. Oh, tell him you can't find me. Tell him I'm not in. Tell him anything you like. And raise that reward to 5,000 francs. Uh. Well? Well? Well, did you find him? No. What do you mean by coming back here without that millionaire, hmm? We'll look everywhere. He must have evaporated. Oh, I'll tell you what became of him. You made it all up. There never was a millionaire. I made it up. Yeah. What about him? He, he is your accomplice. You cooked it up together. It's all a plot to ruin me. You are fired. But how about his clothes and all the money he had? Ah, uh, you stole it. Stole it. Yes, that's right. That's right. That's what happened. He stole it from the millionaire. 
The millionaire. Don't you see? He met the millionaire. He robbed him. Then he made up the whole story. Yes. He says... But where is the millionaire? Yes, where is the millionaire? I know. Huh? Louis. He murdered him. Of course he did. What a story. They want a retraction, do they? Wait till I read this. You are hired. <laughs> wake up, wake up, wake up. What did you do with the body? <laughs> what body? You know what body. Confess. How did you kill him? Huh? Yes, why did you kill him? Who? The millionaire. Why did you murder him? I didn't murder anybody. Oh, yes, you did. You're lying. We know everything. You do? Ah, you see, he admits he that. Stop the presses, hold everything. Get me the prefect of police. No, monsieur. I, I didn't kill anybody. <laughs> he looks like the criminal type, eh? I didn't do anything. I swear it. The quicker we turn this over to the police, the better. Oh, oh. Police? Get out of the at once. We can make the afternoon edition with this. Now hurry. Right. But monsieur. Don't bother me. Hello? Oh, it's you, is it? <laughs> Well, let me tell you something. I am going to sue you and your newspaper for every sue you've got. What for? <laughs> I took one of your millionaire tramps into my house, I fed him, I was kind to him, and what happened? I was robbed! Yes, monsieur, control yourself! Uh, but I'm innocent! Quiet. Extremely innocent! Quiet! No, not you, monsieur. Now, will you listen to me? I will not listen. You started this anarchy, but I will stop it. I am ordering a roundup of every vagrant in town. But, monsieur, I have here the... I'll find you, monsieur. Call away, monsieur, please. Just give me a little time, please. I know I am crazy to do this, but I will give you one more chance. Very well, order your roundup. When you have them all together, I will come down there and identify that millionaire. You bet you come down. And if you don't find that millionaire, I'll throw you in jail. Goodbye. You. Do you know what will happen to you if you do not find that millionaire? Hmm? The guillotine! They will take you up on cold grey dawn. They will tie you down with your head in a little groove, where all you can see is a wicker basket half filled with sand. And then all of a sudden there will be a sliding sound, a rush of air, and then boom! <laughs> That's what I've been telling him. Well, he does. He does, eh? Yes, I do. All right. But don't you let me get you loafing. No, all right. Thank you, officer. <laughs> we'll go in here until they go. All right. <sighs> Can't you ever learn to keep out a policeman's hair? Oh, I knew you'd be there to rescue me. They had taken you away. Nothing could have kept me from coming back, Jean. Do you mean that to yes, me? Yes, I do. Oh, I know I haven't any right, but I have been counting on you. How? Well, now that you've got a job and everything's going all right, I sort of hope maybe you'd stop drifting and settle down with us. You really have got brains, you know. And well, I I hope someday perhaps we could leave this circus. Not so much for my sake as Uncle Victor's. Oh, he really shouldn't spend all of his life in a wagon. And I thought, after a while, we could get him a little house with a garden he could put her around in. <laughs> Does that sound awfully silly? No. It sounds wonderful. 
You know, Jean, for the first time since I can remember, I'm getting a kick out of life. Oh, really, Tony? I don't know how to say it, but... Well, it's, it's really all because of finding you, Jean. The fun we've had together around this little circus, and the people I've run into. I guess I'd forgotten what real folks were. What people like you and gentle old Victor could mean to me. Even a funny little tramp that took me in the night before you came along. I never want to go back to the sort of life I used to live. I, I couldn't do it. Oh, I'm so glad, Tony. Oh. <laughs> then you might stay, Tony? Stay? There's nothing could drive me away from here. Oh! Jean! Tony! Jean! Jean! Jean, Dalton's gone. Again? Yes, in all this excitement, he must have run away. Well, scatter, we'll find him. Hurry. Oh, don't worry, we'll get him. Darwin! 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 Just a minute. I want to talk to you. Well, later. I haven't time now, Maxie. Darwin's loose. You had plenty of time to kiss a childhood playmate of yours. So you've been snooping again, have you? What if I tell Papa to throw you all out in the street, huh? Oh, you wouldn't do that, Maxie. Oh, wouldn't I? Huh? Darwin! Oh, have you seen him anywhere? No, I haven't. Maybe Jean found him. Darwin! Uncle Victor, how long have you been working around the circus? Oh, man and boy, about 52 years. <laughs> That's a long time. How would you like to own this circus? And sit around and have nothing to do but take in the cash? <laughs> <laughs> Why not ask me if I like to own an ocean-going yacht? Well, that's possible, too. Although I don't think you'd like it. But I will buy you this circus. Sure, sure. That's good of you, Tony. We'll talk about it later. We've got to find Darwin now. Yeah, or so we have, yes. But you can't throw us out just for being nice to him. Nice to him? I find you kissing a tramp, and you call it just being nice? But he's not a tramp. No, no, I suppose next you tell me he's a millionaire. Now, Maxie. All right, I give up. I'll tell you the truth. Aha! Uh -huh. I was lying. He's now my childhood playmate. Maxie Tony is the millionaire. I don't believe it. Silly. Why do you suppose I kissed him? Oh, mm. I see. Certainly. Isn't that a woman's way of being uh, kind? <laughs> oh, yeah. I promise you won't tell a soul. No. But then you have to give me half when you get the million. Of course, of course. Now, where is that darn monkey? Darwin! <laughs> now that we are partners, you will go to that big dance with me tonight. Darwin, where are you? I'll buy you the prettiest dress in town. Shoes with silver buckles. Anything you want. Maxie, I'm not your fiancé. Oh, Jean, I wish you would be. Will you, dear? No, Maxie, I'm afraid not. before he gets out of the grounds and turns in on a fire alarm. <laughs> Why not? It all adds to the gaiety of nations. Tony, what's the matter? Nothing, nothing at all. Everything's perfect. Only I've just waked up to the fact that the whole world's a circus and I'm the prize clown in it. Darwin! Darwin! Have you seen him, Jean? I can't find him anywhere. Uncle Victor, what's the matter with Tony? I don't know. Did you see it, too? Yes, he... He just acted so strange. He said some funny things to me, too, a little while ago. Poor boy, I hope he's all right. Well, do you see him? Monsieur Courier. Hello. Oh, all right. Bring in another lot. Send this at once, please. Uh, 42 francs 50. Uh, send it collect. Have you any identification? No, I'm afraid not. I've lost everything. I'm sorry. Look here. 
I've got to have this money to get out of town. Uh, charge it to my Paris account. Your what? <laughs> oh, don't bother me. I'm busy. You've heard the story about that millionaire, haven't you? I've heard of nothing else. Well, I'm the man. You? Yes. That is what they all say. Look here, it's important that I get this message out of town. Now, you'll not lose your money. I'll see to that. I promise you, my foreign office will send you a check uh, as soon as I reach Paris. My mistake, monsieur, my mistake. Of course I'll send you a message, but first I must get permission from the chief of service. Uh, just a formality, you know. Just one moment, please. Right. Uh, just a minute. All right. I'll be right back. Get me the courier. Yes, the newspaper office. Hurry. Hello, uh, the editor. Quick. Hello? Yes? This is the telegraph office. I have found the millionaire. What? He's right here. Yes. Do I get a reward? Yes, yes. Hold the line for a minute. Hello? Get me the prefecture of police. Quick. Don't let him get away. All right, all right. Just wait a second. Hello? Hello? Let me talk to the editor of the Courier. Out! Hold on. This is ridiculous. You are wasting our time. He's right. There is no millionaire. Hello? Hello? Oh. Is he still there? Well, don't let him get away. I will not go on with this thing any further. Oh, yes, you will. We have made an agreement. I'm going to hold you to it. You can't. He is going to see every single Trump you have got. How many more do you have? There are no more, monsieur. There are no more. more. I demand that you arrest this faker. You... Excuse me. Please. Your office is calling, monsieur. Don't bother me. I'll shoot your paper. That's what I'll do. I'll have you run out of the town. Well, my friend, you are as good as dead. No, monsieur, please. No. Gentlemen, I have an announcement to make. An announcement of the gravest nature. This fiend... Sorry, monsieur. They forgot these. I beg your pardon. One. This one, of course. He's the millionaire. Who? Me? You see, he's still trying to keep it a secret. But, but you do remember this. You gave it to me. Remember? Yes, yes, of course, my dear fellow. Now it all comes back to me. What did I tell you? I said there was a millionaire, and there is. The courier never lies. Welcome to our city. Permit me, Monsieur. Your office is calling again. Oh, where is that phone? Pardon me, Monsieur. I forgot to ask. What is your name? Uh, I think for the time being I should prefer to remain incognito. Oh. Monsieur Incognito. Uh, just call me Monsieur X. Monsieur X. <laughs> what a headline that will be. Thank you, Monsieur. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Allow me to welcome you to our city. Take it here, monsieur. Oh, thank you, thank you. Hello, hello. Hello, monsieur. This is me. Listen, listen. I have found the millionaire. Get out next to right away. What do you mean you found him? She's in the telegraph office. The clerk he just told me. He is right here. What? I said he is right here. He has just been identified. And you are fired. They found him. Hello? Hello? Well? So, you are the millionaire, huh? Yes, I am. Get out, you fraud. They have found the millionaire. What are you talking about? The courier has just informed me. And I have a good mind to have you arrested for false representation. Ah. Another step and I'll fire. Have you gone crazy? Get out. Get out. Don't be silly. Huh. I think I'll have a look at that millionaire. Come right in, monsieur. Come right in. Ah, this is indeed a great honor. Oh. Uh, we're very happy to have you here. Very happy indeed. This is the Imperial Suite. I trust it will prove to your satisfaction. One picture, please. 
Paulette. Thank you. <laughs> Monsieur, when can we expect a statement about the million francs you promised? Huh? The million francs! Oh, uh, patience, my friend, patience. <laughs> now, if there is anything else I can do, monsieur, Why, please. Uh, uh, please, monsieur Curie, you promised me champagne? Yes, yes, of course. Yes, champagne for everybody. And some lobster with thermidor? Yes, lobster, uh, caviar, all kinds of expensive food. Uh, leave it to me, monsieur, leave it to and me. And now, if you will excuse me, I should like to have a moment alone with my friends. Of course. We have many things to talk over. Oh, of course. Yes. <laughs> Naturally. <laughs> Ah, there is a real gentleman. <laughs> and so democratic. <laughs> Where do you think you are going? You cannot use this door. I'll use any door I like. Uh, but, monsieur, I could not stop it. What is the trouble? What is it you want? I want to see the man stopping here who claims he's the millionaire. Our honored guest is not to be disturbed. He's an imposter. Why, he's no more the millionaire than this doorman. Oh, no? I suppose the mayor and the prefect of police do not know what they're doing, eh? No, of course they don't. And you're all letting yourselves in for a lot of trouble. Well, it's our trouble, not yours. You'll have to leave now. Well, whether you like it or not, I'm going to see him. Stop it! Turn him over to the police! Let go of me! Let go of me! That man is a faker, I tell you. I'm the man they're looking for! Let go! Shall we protect our CBS or no? Now, listen. Hello? Can you walk? Yes, <laughs> but I cannot sit down with these forks. You're not going to sit down. This is no time to complain. You're a rich man. Yes. <laughs> Down with the party. We are just going for a little straw. Yes, I will. We'll be right back. Monsieur, I have a very pleasant surprise for you. Indeed. Your yacht has just returned. Huh? And the captain and your guests are on their way here right now. That beast is a public menace. Now I'm going to give you one more chance, but I warn you, He'd better not turn in another fire alarm. Oh, thank you, monsieur. Thank you very much. Come on, Darwin. This whole thing is stupid. I tell you, the man at the hotel is an imposter. All right, what's the chance? Disorderly conduct and disturbing the peace. And resisting arrest. Oh, nonsense. I'm simply trying to prove who I am. Quiet! Ah, you've been here before, haven't you? Yes, and if you recall, you thought I was the millionaire. Ah, I remember, indeed. You made a fool of me. On the contrary, you showed great discernment. I am the millionaire. You're what? I'm the man. Is this man drunk? Evidently. Look here, if you want confirmation of my identity, call the American consul. Oh, you want me to get confirmation? Well, I don't need confirmation. No man can fool me more than once. 500 francs or 50 days. I demand to see the American consul. You are drunk. Take him away. I am not drunk. I was never more sober in my life. Call the American consul and pay the relief. Poor Tony. Dean. Dean. Oh, you found him. Yes, yes, but wait till I tell you about Tony. Tony? What about him? He's gone crazy. What? Stark's the young man. He thinks he's the millionaire. Well, he was only joking. Oh, no, he wasn't. I saw him at the police station. Police station? Yes, and he kept insisting he's the millionaire. Oh, well, maybe he's ill or drinking. That's what they think, but he's really off his head. I didn't want to tell you, but this afternoon he was talking about buying this circus. Crazy stuff like that. It's very sad. Oh, poor Tony. Well, what do we do? We've got to get him out of there. And where are we going to get 500 francs to pay his fine? 500 francs? That's what it is. Oh. Oh. Well, where are you going? Come on, Darwin. Oh, Maxie. Oh, hello, Maxie. Hello. Oh, won't you sit down? I'd like to talk to you. Sure, <laughs> sure. Uh, Maxie, uh, do you believe in love at first sight? Do I believe in love at first sight? Y yes, I do. Oh, well, that's how I fall in love with you. At first sight? I uh, guess. But... But you've known me for years. Well, that doesn't make any difference. You may know a person, but never really see them. 
And suddenly your eyes open, and you see them for the first time. You do? Mm -hmm. And that's what happened to me tonight at dinner. Just as I was eating my soup, I suddenly saw you. But I wasn't there. I had dinner with Papa. I mean, I saw you in my mind. And suddenly I realized how attractive you really are. You did? Mm -hmm. And I thought, if you still want me to go to the ball... Oh, Jean, I do. You mean you'll go? Mm -hmm. Oh, but Maxie, even though we aren't engaged, I'm afraid I have anything to wear. Oh. Oh, you mean your thing I promised. Oh, well, come on, let's go and be fine right now. Oh, no, 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 Maxie. Oh, that's awfully sweet of you, but, uh, well, Maxie, perhaps you better just give me the money. Money? Uh, oh, well, you see, I'll need some, uh, well, little things, you know. Uh, A man mustn't. Uh, well, <laughs> I know, I understand. All right, Jean, how much do you need? Well, I'm afraid for everything I'll need uh, 500 francs. Uh-huh, uh-huh, 500 francs? Yes, uh-huh. Well, I wouldn't want you to be ashamed of me, Maxie. You, the proprietor's son and everything. Yeah, but 500 francs. Well, uh, uh, Maxie... All right, Jean. I'll get it. You will? Oh, good. This is not my money, it's Papa's. And if you've ever found out... Oh, well, don't worry, Maxie, he won't. So long. Max, have you seen Jean? She just left. Oh, I hope she raises the money before it's too late. What money? Too late for what? The 500 francs to get Tony out of jail. 500 francs? I've been robbed. I've been robbed. Papa! 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 I've been robbed! Papa! Here it is, mister. Here it is. Please, please, let him out at once. Let out who? The tramp. He's fine. 500 francs. 500 francs for a tramp? Please, hurry, hurry. The whole city's going crazy. Oh, but he's not crazy. He's quite harmless and cheerful. If he thought he was a millionaire, well, everybody in the city's gone a little crazy. You just said so yourself. <clears throat> All right. Let him out. Yes, monsieur. But remember, I place him entirely in your charge. Oh, thanks, monsieur. I'll look at him. <laughs> She obtained money under false pretense, but you gave it to her. I put her in jail for years, for years, for life. Oh, Tony, Tony, I've been so worried about you. I bet you were. Uh... Oh, we can go home now. I just paid your fine. There she is. She's a thief. False pretense is such a charge against you. What's going on here? That money is stolen. She didn't steal anything. Great, but that's my money. Be careful how you refer to the money of the Republic. But it belongs to me. Silence. Where did you get this money? Oh, monsieur, you look like you have an understanding heart. If a friend of yours were in jail, would you care how you got him out? Are you trying to incriminate me? I'll tell you what happened. She asked me for 500 francs. My money? Yes, Papa's money. She said she needed to buy clothes, but she really wanted to get that tramp out of jail. They kindly took at the million francs. Because he really is a millionaire. Oh, he is not. He is, you told me so. Oh, monsieur, he's only a poor tramp. We were afraid something was happening to his mind, so I had to get money. Jean. Why didn't you get it from me? Well, where would you get any money? Where? Why, you told me he That's right, I heard you tell him. Oh, but Tony, don't you see? I had to tell him something. He saw us kissing, he was going to have you fired, so... Tony, you don't think I really believed you were the millionaire? <laughs> yes, I'm afraid I did. Why, I only told him the first lie I could think of. Aha, you see, she confesses. She is guilty. False pretenses, monsieur. So give me my money. I demand justice. <laughs> I'll give you justice, trying to steal uh, uh, the officer, throw them out! Throw them out! You want money! You can't do that! 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 You want money! You can't is he really the millionaire? Well, of course he is. Of course he is. Oh. Tony is... Can't you see it just by looking at him? Well, I, I don't believe it. He's much too nice to be a millionaire. Tony, you're not. Yes, Jean, it's true. I'll never forgive you. Monsieur, Monsieur, Monsieur Prefet, a crowd of citizens is forming outside. They threaten to break down the door. Citizens, what citizens? They say they spend their money entertaining these tramps and they want a million francs. Oh. Oh, no, we want our money! We want our money! Send 
some men down to quiet. We want to talk about it. I want to read the Bible. Yes, yes, monsieur. You deceiver, you rebel rouser. The name is Corporal Peck. Yes, yes. Suppose we turn you over to that mob, huh? Oh, no! Huh? Monsieur, you friend! Uh, please save us. I know you hate me, but... Hate you? No, Louis, I love you. Really? Yeah, of course I do. Why, after all, gentlemen, he only said that I'd give a million francs. Yes, yes, oh, yes. Well, and in exchange, all I asked was to find a person who would take an interest in me for myself. Well, I found that person. Hmm. Five million francs! Who gets the million francs? <laughs> patience now, patience, my friends. Have you got a checkbook? Checkbook? A check oh, you mean you mean you really give me one million francs? You give it to us? Wait, 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 wait. I'll donate it to the poor. Not to your adopted city. The city that takes you to her grateful art. All right, then. Half to the poor and half to the city. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. The checkbook, monsieur. Oh, oh, that is, I will, on one condition. A condition, monsieur? What, what conditions? conditions? If the young lady marry me, what do you say? No, of course I won't marry you. What? Oh, you you yeah. won't marry him? Certainly not. I only wanted to be sure, Jean. Oh, please, please mademoiselle, please. please. For the poor? Please, oh, please, 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 mademoiselle. Yeah, please, please. He opens the checkbook. They give him the pen. He closes the checkbook. Please, mademoiselle, please. please. Your name will be grown in forget-me-nots in front of the city hall. We will make you honorary lieutenant of the police. The poor will drink 5,000 bottles of wine to you. And champagne, too. And what about that little cottage for Uncle Victor? And you were just laughing at me. Tony's not to blame, Gene. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He takes the pen again. He dips it in the ink. He is. No, he puts it down again. Please, my please. 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 Think of the wine for the poor. Think of the city. Please, Gene. If you thought I was in love with you, well, I wasn't. I was in love with a poor tramp who needed me. He still needs you, Gene. He always will. Even a corporal peck begs you. We all please. You open the checkbook again. They give him the pen. He's, he's, he's signing. Yes, Monsieur Mayor. Monsieur Newlander, do you consent to take Mademoiselle Hoffman as your wife? Yes, I do. Mademoiselle and Monsieur, you have heard articles 212, 213, 214, 215, 216, 217, 218, 219 of the Civil Code regulating the marriages in France. Are you willing to conform to them? Yes, yes we, we are. are. Do the parents of Mademoiselle Hoffman consent to this marriage? Yes. Do the parents of Monsieur Newlander consent to this marriage? Uh, no parents living. Then, in the name of the law, I now pronounce you husband and wife. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <Tony. laughs>